You know, it's a very special evening for all of these folks and for us as well to witness this. At this time, uh, we're going to get some responses from the team. So let me call forward one of the coaches, Charlie Larson. Charlie? So I said, this is going to be real interesting. 
So, but first of all, um, I'd like to give um, credit to my sister, Regina Hervey. She was the first African American to ever attend Sacred Heart. And to be real honest about it, my mother and my father, they had the, uh, both the, uh, the sense and the courage to say that their children would get a Catholic education. Let me just say thank you to this committee that has just put a wonderful um, affair together. It's been just outstanding. And I remember it, um, the people here, no different from when I first came here in 1971. The people are just so warm and so friendly. It's a beautiful city. It's a clean city. And it's just, it's been a wonderful experience. And I know for my brother and I, um, we actually live in different states, so it's kind of a, a reunion for us as well. Um, Stephen lives in uh, Virginia, and I live in Alabama. And uh, so we have a, a chance to fellowship as well. And it's a, it's a special time for us. But uh, I, I want to say something about there's, there's a really big distinction between the 72 and the 74 team. And I, and I, I have to reach out for a minute because Brad is here, and uh, I had uh, some really phenomenal guys on the 74 team. Today, when I came over here to register, and I was meeting with Dave, and we were kind of reminiscing, uh, he was reminding me, and Jim Latex here came up, and. Uh, some of the guys came over early to register and they started kind of, you know, reflecting. And they said, yeah, you know, Michael would always come behind us. The linemen were really good at this. And they said, he would always push us out the way. And I said, well, not really. I was pushing you into the guy so I could get around him. <laughs> and the fact of the matter was, I was, um, I had good speed and I had good weight. And um, I could probably run over you and run around you with equal ease. I mean, that was pretty much the deal. But it was these guys up here, particularly the offensive line, that were just phenomenal. One of the things that made us, I think, really good is that we had played together for four years. And there was a camaraderie that just existed. And I was talking to Jim Latex here earlier today. And we kind of had this, it's kind of like, Telepathy. I think we kind of knew what we were going to do before we even did it, so it was kind of instinctive. And we kind of, you have to kind of feel sorry for the other teams because you kind of knew what you're going to do, you know. And these guys were really proficient at what they did. So on the 75 football team or 74 football team, it's true. I, I would push the guys a little bit, you know, say, get in his face, get him off my back, and then I would do what I, I would do. But it was a little bit different um, in 74 because the 74, or I mean the 72 football team, which was Brad, uh, let's see, Dave, was it Dave? And uh, one of the heavy boys. Um, that line was really special because in football, um, they were kind of mean to be quite honest about it. <laughs> and actually they were nasty. Okay? <laughs> Let's just be honest about it. So the distinction is that the 70s, these guys were classic, okay? They were just good old-fashioned football guys. They would hit you, knock you down, but they would even pick you up, okay? They were really good sportsmen. But this guy out here, this sophomore team, they were, there, they were very different. They were very special. On that team, um, it's true. I would grab, particularly Brad's jersey, and he would pull me down, down the field, see? They had this certain tenacity about them, and I'm gonna mimic Brad just a little bit because I don't think we get enough chance to, to kind of roast him, and it's the first time. So I'm not a great actor, but bear with me on this one. So we would get in the huddle, and they would call a fullback dive, and Brad would start, you know, licking his chops. <laughs> and we would run the play, and these guys, unlike this group of guys, 
These, these guys were much smaller. They probably averaged about 185, 195 pounds. You know, on a good day. Age has something to do with this, I know, okay? But this sophomore team, when I was a sophomore, Brad and them were just mean, and uh, were big. Now Brad's short, but he's stocky. And uh, they would, they would, they, they had some favorite plays they would call, and when they would run the, the dives, they would, it, I mean, you could just see the enjoyment in his face. I knocked him down, you know? <laughs> and he would come back to the, to the huddle, and this is true. He would come back to the huddle, and you know how you get down like this? He's like, I, I got him, I got him. <laughs> and, I mean, he would take great pleasure in knowing that he really rolled some out of the open. I mean, he took great pleasure. They, they were not very polite, and even these guys up here will testify to the fact that we had a drill. I forgot what it was called. Bow on the ring. And basically, I don't know if it was Jeff Bakke or, or uh, Coach um, uh, Lawson that created the drill. You would, I guess, lay down and then get up and hit each other. Is that about right? Yeah. Or stay down. But the point is, in my sophomore year, the, these guys, those seniors, took great, great enjoyment in knocking my fellow underclassmen down. And they would never pick them up. And they would knock them down every time they tried to get up. So I could hold my own, basically. And I knew not who not to go up against. I didn't go up against Dave, and I didn't go up against Brad. So I had a little bit of sense about who to go up against. But it was one exercise that I have to also, in all seriousness, give credit to that sophomore team that also made me a great player and uh, uh, just a wonderful individual. And I, I think it's important to, to, to make that distinction. But this group of men up here, I think what separates them is that I feel like they're my family. I feel like they're like my brothers and my sisters. And they all have helped me out over the years. And it's been many years, and even though I, I don't live here anymore, I remember reaching out to them, and many of them just kind of came and spoke out to me and helped me out at a really difficult time. It's a unique community. It's one of the things that is really unique about this community. And I want to thank uh, Dave again for reaching out and getting in touch with me. He definitely put his, you know, I guess his Dick Tracy hat on and he found me. And uh, he started sending me emails in, in uh, Florida. And I said, well, Dave, I'm moving to Mobile, Alabama. He said, you know, we got internet there too, Mike, you know? <laughs> he was absolutely relentless. And I'm so grateful um, that he did that. I'm also grateful for my brother to be here. But I'm really especially honored, and I'm truly honored to be back here in this community and to be able to fellowship with some wonderful people. And I'm looking forward to this weekend and the entire weekend. And it's true, I only have been back one other time. And that was, I think it was in 1996. Yep. And that's when the Alumni Association honored me and Paul Kelleher for being Hall of Fame for basketball and also for football. So my number was officially retired, um, number 33, at that point in time. I hope and pray that God gives me the blessings that I will continue to be able to come back on a regular basis and be able to be part of this community on a consistent basis. And I thank you all very much. Another standout on that team, and a captain of the team, number 77 on your scorecard, number one in your hearts, Tommy Kaiser.
I have a slightly different version, having not coming from Alabama. I promised my teammates I wouldn't tell anything that would get them arrested this evening. Uh, it is indeed an honor for me to speak on behalf of this football team. Not only the players and the coaches, but the cheerleaders and the pom-pom girls. It's back what we called the dance line back in the day. And of course all the fans and classmates who stuffed those pep buses and followed us around the top of the state football conference. And even beyond that, having been a part of the athletic club for a number of years and as a very proud parent of three Sacred Heart alumni myself, I can appreciate what kind of happens behind the scenes in the concession stands up in the announcer's booth, uh, at the gates, down on the field, field preparation and all those things. And I can understand back in 1974, there were a lot of people who, whose, one of their highlights of their week was this football team. We can all of us celebrate what happened in 1974. We did something that only two other teams before us have done and only two other teams since that have done, and that is 9-0. Pretty incredible. As some of you know, um, as a member of the Athletic Club, I've, I've had the opportunity, and it truly has been a pleasure, to work with and to help with and to celebrate these other, with these other four teams when they were inducted into the Hall of Fame. And having seen all five induction ceremonies now, I, there's really two things that come into my mind. Number one, one man's opinion, of course. I think we saved the very best football team for last. Agree? I, I say that uh, because I know that it will probably spark some very interesting and some very entertaining conversations the rest of the week. But I think the Athletic Club really wanted us to be the best. Now, on a slightly more serious note, I see an awful lot of other similarities between this football team and other great football teams here. Uh, they're remarkable, and I could probably stand up here till midnight and talk about them. Uh, there are a lot of common threads that run between those football teams and through our history, and again, I could stand up here all night and talk about it. But I'm only going to concentrate on one. When the two football teams that came after us were inducted into the Hall of Fame, both on the same weekend, they gave my football team a compliment. They said, we started something. We started in Europe, is what they said. And the reason they said that was because in the fall of 74, 9-0 snowball. The following year when the juniors on this football team became seniors under coach uh, Elwell, and he is here this evening, they would go 8-2. The sophomores on this team, when they became seniors under Coach Elway, would go eight and two. And of course, in our infinite wisdom, a football coach going 16 and four in two years, we decided to get rid of Mr. Elway. <laughs> we brought out Mr. Myers. And then all of a sudden, there were two more undefeated football teams. So if you were in junior high school here in 1974, you watched, or were a part of, a football program that went 45 and 6. Some pretty incredible numbers. However, I cannot and will not accept the compliment from those teams. We did not start anything. We were, and we still are, a part of something bigger called Sacred Heart Athletics. That's what we celebrate this evening. We learned our lesson from people like Brad Kerr. They, he made us, we learned how to be Sacred Heart football players by getting the snot pounded out of us by people like Brad. <laughs> bull in the ring and a lot of other bull things that we talked about. That's how we got to be the team that we were. Now, I remember Brad when he was inducted into the Hall of Fame. I'm going to pick on Brad just like Mike did. I remember that when Brad was inducted into the Hall of Fame, both as an individual and as a coach, he gave credit to the people who preceded him, like I want to tonight. He gave credit to people like Tommy, Gary Singer, Mike Merrick, all Hall of Famers themselves. 
I heard Mike Merrick give credit to the people who came before him, people like his brother, Dennis, also in our Hall of Fame, and so forth and so on. That common thread, we can watch it and see it very clearly. It goes way back to the beginning of our history. Now, the question tonight is, did that common thread, is that rich tradition still alive and well here at Sacred Heart? Should be any question? Yes, it certainly is. Numerous examples. But one very interesting one, and I, I believe it may be mentioned later, is that there were four football players on this team who had daughters who are also being inducted into the Hall of Fame tonight on the softball team. Pretty incredible number. Now, I'd be so bold as to suggest to you that the next great football team or the next great team might be one we see this year, maybe next year. If you watch the papers and you look at the win-loss records here at Sacred Heart, you're gonna say, no, nah, I, I don't think so. But I caution you about using that flawed logic. And it's flawed, and I'll use my football team as an example. When I was in junior high school, we played in the Greater Grand Forks Junior High School football conference or something. South Valley Junior, or South Valley Schrader, East Side, we played in these twice, twice a year. When I was in seventh grade, we lost every game. When we were in eighth grade, we were a model of consistency, losing every game and losing big. If you were in the youth football program anywhere here in the Greater Grand Forks area, you were guaranteed second, third, fourth spring that you got to play at least twice a year when you played us. Ninth grade, we didn't lose every game. We went to Crookston and we beat what would soon be our arch rival, the Blue Wave from Crookston Cathedral, 22 to 14. The following year, as sophomores, we played on that really good football team we've been talking about. But we, we didn't really contribute much to their success. We were blocking dummies. We were a source of entertainment for kangaroo courts. Initiations, which are now deemed illegal. <laughs> and yes, I have lawyers on my team here, so you guys be careful. We sang the Cider Song quite a few times that year. Not every game, but quite a few. We learned how to do that. And maybe the greatest contribution that my teammates and I made to that team, with the exception of Mr. Herbie, of course, is that every Thursday night we cleaned and polished the seniors' spikes. So yes, Mr. DeLille, Mr. Kerr, Mr. Doug Gregoire, if you were here, Saturday nights or Friday nights, you guys look damn good out there. <laughs> You're welcome. Glad we could help. When I was a junior, as it was noted, we won our homecoming game. Did I mention that we won our homecoming game? <laughs> That's the only game we won. <laughs> We were one and eight in the fall of 1973, and then the fall of 1974 comes along, bang. And some 30, 40, whatever years later, here we are. So yes. Now, is there a secret to our success? Yes, there is. It's easy to understand, it's easy to explain, and it's very short to explain. We did the little things correct. We paid attention to the fundamentals. You certainly have to give our coaching staff a lot of credit. A lot of credit. We implemented a new fear option offense, and that offense just fit these group of men to a T. We didn't have to be the biggest or the fastest, or nor did we have to have the most players on the sidelines, and we weren't any of those things. We just had to run this fear option correctly. With Coach Baki here, I'm going to say he had a brilliantly simple defensive scheme. Brilliant. I remember Coach Baki stood in front of me in practice, perhaps down in church.